Welcome, friends, fans, and followers. It's Sam Dobrow here to share with you the story behind my surreal photographic art portfolios. I call this body the Surreality Collection because it truly is surreal. This work has been inspired, excuse me, this work has been inspired by the paintings of Salvador Dali and Vincent van Gogh. My favorite style of painting is Impressionism and Post-Impressionism, and Van Gogh is my top favorite from that time period. My color palettes, starry skies, and textured abstractions evolve from the style of the Impressionists. I began enhancing my photographs to create painterly effects, and um, uh, that those effects reflect these Impressionism styles. I'm going to start off and show you a few slides and uh, kind of talk through the process of, of how I created this uh, style of photography. By the way, before I get started, I should say uh, I'm new to this technology, so I apologize if there's any glitches. Um, if something happens, I'll try to be right back. Uh, but let's, uh, let's look for the best. And uh, again, uh, welcome to my artist talk. Okay, the, uh, the image that I'm showing here is um, uh, one of the first that I started doing where I was uh, experimenting with this Impressionist style of, of photographic enhancement. Um, you'll notice that there's textures in here, the bright colors. Uh, but it's still pretty much a straightforward photograph with a lot of uh, a lot of highly saturated uh, colors that evolved from doing night photography out on uh, Ocean Drive in Miami Beach. The Art Deco architecture is like a uh, movie stage just waiting to be captured, and on uh, most nights of the year. You can't even see the lower levels of these beautiful Art Deco buildings because of the traffic. One night a year, they have the Art Deco Architecture Festival where they close off Ocean Drive to traffic. And uh, for that weekend, uh, there's a lot of people out in the streets, and it's all about celebrating Art Deco architecture. What I did is I went the night before it opened up when everything was shut down and took pictures of all of the architecture along Ocean Drive, and this became the foundation for uh, the Oceana collection. The uh, techniques that I used in these type of photos evolved later into a Dali influenced surrealistic style while working on a photo taken in Morocco. And I'm going to show you the results of that and uh, tell you a little bit more about how this uh, evolution occurred. This is probably the first image that I uh, worked on as a photograph that I went beyond the uh, realms of uh, the, the physical constraints of what the image had presented to me. Um, I was walking one day, a very hot day in Morocco, and I happened upon this abandoned building. It was a hot day and I felt dehydrated. Perhaps the heat gave me a different perspective of what I was looking at. Uh, the distressed plaster called out to me like a landscape from a Dali painting, and I wanted to do something with this. I felt compelled to do something uh, surreal with this, with this image I was looking at. So I made several photographs with the intention of going back to the digital darkroom and creating a surreal image. When I got home, I applied my typical Impressionism techniques to the image, but I still felt there was something missing. I pumped up the colors, the textures, uh, you know, all of that kind of came into play, but it still looked like a dilapidated building. So I kept on working on it and finally decided to go all out and actually melt the landscape with Photoshop. I showed it to people. They loved it. And this is kind of how everything got started. This image is, uh, is to me, call, what, what I've called uh, We Are Not Alone. And, it's, and that's the underlying theme of so much of the Surreality Collection. It's about the possibility of a parallel world, a, uh, a mirror 
world out there where things are kind of like what we see, but they're different. They're not the same. And uh, in these images, I use stars to uh, indicate that there are potentially life forms unlike humans that are among us or occupy the uh, universe with us. And you'll see in many of the images where I place stars in a place that's not your typical place that you'd expect to see a star. Uh, you'll notice uh, some down in this area, if you'll follow my mouse, in this cave that there's some stars in there. That's kind of an, my indication of life that's not human, that's living here in this uh, altered reality. You'll see this use of stars elsewhere uh, throughout, the, throughout my collections, uh, tying this theme of we are not alone uh, together in the Surreality collection. You'll also see up here in the uh, upper left, this melted edge of the building really just talked to me like something Dolly would have painted. And uh, I, I just kind of love that. This uh, snake head looking uh, almost like a Egyptian sculpture, which is basically a distortion of the structure of this building. The, these are all some of the elements that I tried to bring out uh, in this Salvador Dali-esque uh, picture. And again, we go back to reality in the uh, background. You'll see there is a, a landscape in the background, which gives us a sense of place, a sense of perception. And then the skies, uh, the starry skies that uh, mimic so much of the style of uh, Vincent van Gogh. Then I started, I started moving, uh, once this, hap once this uh, uh, image really seemed to catch people's attention, I decided to work on a portfolio of, of images that I had made on, on South Beach, Ocean Drive. And all of these Art Deco architectural buildings just played so well into the type of images that I wanted to create. This one here is uh, the Park Central Hotel. And again, this feels like a stage uh, that's set for the story to happen. You'll see in this uh, building with the open uh, window that there seems to be something there behind. You'll see a star uh, in this window up here looking out and this one here. And, and again, these are, these are part of the theme of We're Not Alone. As we also look to the starry skies, uh, we see some of the, the uh, Van Gogh influence over here and just the broad universe of, of light and potential life forms out there in the uh, infinite uh, universe beyond our small planet where we, that we occupy. The story behind this, um, the night I was out there, uh, this hotel was supposed to be the hotel where a uh, where Michael Bolton was going to stay for to play a concert the next day on Miami Beach. And I was told by a security guard that he was coming. Uh, it was a cold night. It was windy out there. And I waited out here for a couple hours for him to show up. My guess is that uh, he came in the back way to not draw attention and that he might have even bought out the whole hotel, being that there's no uh, lighting uh, in the hotel except for this one hallway and the open windows here. So I'm guessing he came in and uh, or maybe was going to be coming in later and that there was going to be no people here to uh, to greet him, uh, none of his fans to uh, hound him for a signature or autograph, whatever. But in the front here of the Park Central Hotel, there's always was, I shouldn't say always, uh, there was this antique vehicle which had a, a stuffed mannequin in it uh, to uh, uh, reminisce about the movie The Godfather. And out front of this hotel, we see what looks like a hit ready to happen. We've got what looks like a security guard or a hit man. You've got this man over here raising his arms. Uh, you can see over here there's something going on here in this image. And uh, this, this all looks quite, uh, um, I guess, fantasy-esque, uh, movie-esque, uh, kind of drama waiting to unfold. And I just really like this picture, adding its surreal effects, the beautiful colors of the neon lights and the, uh, the surrealism of, of the imagery. Oops, let me go back a little bit. This is a more recent addition to the collection. I've been reworking some of the images uh, that I shot that night. 
And uh, I particularly like this because of its its simplicity, its its calmness, and and again the beautiful Art Deco architecture here, as seen through a, a melted landscape, something surreal. And uh, again, the absence of people uh, it makes this quite uh, interesting and, and gives it a unique feel uh, with its melting uh, sidewalks, the the watery melting feeling of the of the building itself. And again, up here, the starry skies, a comet in the air, and uh, over here in the window, again, a pair of might be uh, uh, extraterrestrial life staring out as the only thing really showing any sort of life form here. The Breakwater Hotel was renovated recently, and they have done just an amazing job bringing this iconic piece of architecture back to life. Um, I have always been fascinated with space, so bringing in some of these pictures of the planets and the uh, constellations and galaxies and nebulas uh, to accent the sky just seemed so appropriate with this moment in this, uh, in, in this image, just portraying the breakwater and, and, its, uh, and its return to the streets of Miami Beach in a surreal manner. And um, I just love the colors of this and, and the, uh, the vast sense of space in the sky. This is one of the few images that I do that's a daytime shot. This was a panorama that was taken up off the uh, south end of South Beach and what's called Government Cut. I've really kind of gone over the edge to uh, make it surreal. I've got these uh, these uh, seagulls here, which appear to be fishing. And then there's this giant uh, surreal grouper who's kind of laughing at them, uh, trying to catch him. And you'll see a variety of birds flying through here. The buildings of South Beach, again, melting in a Dali-esque landscape. And even some of the people here. Um, having uh, certain um, surreal transformations of their body and, you know, from large heads and small bodies uh, to what's going on here on the beach. Uh, this is a pretty large print. It's a 30 by 60 inch print. And uh, it, again, this is what makes this really unusual is that it's one of the few that I shoot during the daytime on Miami Beach. This is from a different collection. This is from the Americas collection. And uh, this was photographed in New York. You're probably aware of this piece of architecture. Uh, this is called the Vessel. It's a new piece of public art that's uh, recently opened in New York. And it's been a great attention grabber down in Hudson, in the Hudson Yards of, of Manhattan. I saw this uh, very interestingly as potentially some type of a communication device uh, collecting uh, images or energy from the cosmos and funneling it down to Earth. The way the building in the background kind of centers through it makes it feel like some type of a, uh, of a satellite dish. And uh, again, we have very interesting aspects of starry skies, the twirls in the sky, the Horsehead nebula and, and galaxies out in the distance, uh, giving us this this very uh, spatial, extraterrestrial feel. This is another shot I made in New York City. This is at Columbus Circle, and uh, I'm kind of playing on the concept of the Columbus spacecraft, which meant a very fiery end, and uh, Columbus being the the uh, circle and the uh, founder of uh, North America. You'll see this image here of, a, of an aircraft, which symbolizes the Columbus spacecraft kind of re-entering Earth. And instead of re-entering in a, in a fiery ball, it's re-entering into a different world, kind of a surreal place. Like it's, it's, passed, um, it's passed through to another dimension where the, uh, where the astronauts come back safe. We, we do have some stars in the sky and... Uh, the surreal ground and, and again the melting of these elements here to tie this unit 
this, this piece of work together. This comes from the um, um, Disorient series. These photos in this series were made in Southeast Asia. And again, it uses very similar techniques to the, uh, to the other surreal images. Again, focusing in on melting architecture, uh, we have distorted images of the people and their faces and their body structures to kind of create this uh, maybe uh, cartoonistic um, uh, type of feeling to it. Uh, um, and again, the colors and the stars are all uh, so much part of the feeling for this series. This, this picture was quite interesting. It, it was a difficult one to make. Uh, it was late in the night, and we were walking back from dinner uh, through the farmer's market. And the farmer's market ha had shut down, and most of the lights were down, and I, we found ourselves in front of this temple. And uh, these two women who were vendors were leaving, but they were quite anxious to sell the last bit of their goods to us and uh, didn't want to leave us alone. So... I got them to agree to being photographed, and to me, this kind of really created the uh, the image of Southeast Asia in a in a surreal parallel world. We have the planet Jupiter in the sky, uh, and and we have the uh, very um, traditional uh, Oriental art of this of this building. This uh, very unique structure. And again, over here, we see this, this meteor, again, kind of symbolizing the we are not alone uh, element of this series. This is uh, from the Zootropa collection. Zootropa focuses in on images from uh, Europe. This image was a reflecting pool that was at the Palace of Versailles, just outside of Paris. And anytime I see these uh, really interesting geometric forms, it kind of just w makes me want to change them and, and take away their geometry and melt them. So we've got the Van Gogh-esque skies here. We have uh, the birds that are flying above, and we have this, uh, this very manicured French garden here with a center of a reflecting pond in it that just just speaks to chaos in a in a in a world that that mankind has tried to create order from. So to me, changing the the perfectly structured ordered environment to something that has a little bit of chaos and an abnormality and, and asymmetry to it uh, just was so. Um, compelling. And again, this is a fairly good size panorama. It's a 20 by 54 inch, so it's rather sizable and there's there is quite a bit of detail and texture in everything from the swirls uh, in the foreground to the skies and and the and the uh, birds that were placed in here. Uh, these these birds actually are from the uh, Galapagos Islands, so they obviously don't belong in this geography, but they do belong in this altered world. And uh, this is probably my most recent exploration in the Serality Collection. I'm starting to look at landscapes. Uh, this particular one was influenced by some of uh, Van Gogh's paintings where through his Impressionist style, you can see and feel him almost crying as he's painting these pictures in the water of his eyes and the tears in his eyes create these uh, these melted looks to his paintings. So to me, I, I took this and made it somewhat Dali-esque Dali with um, the melting of the trees and the swirl of the woods and just to kind of create this, this uh, soft, gentle feeling place that kind of invites us in. Uh, to me, I, I feel the whispers. I I call this uh, voices from the past. It's like the breeze is blowing and talking 
to me and uh, there's whispers in the wind and there's voices from the past talking to me and telling me a story of why I'm here and where I'm going and, and what happened in the past. This image is a panorama that was developed uh, from my visit in Cuba. I call it the Shrine of Havanicus. And uh, here again, we use a lot of uh, stars in the sky and uh, galaxies to, to create this, this very airy feeling. And we disrupt the architecture with the, with the melting feeling of, of being underwater. As we look at this, this church, this landmark uh, that was in uh, a courtyard in Havana and the people there and the night lights. And of course, you know, just the structure to me commands doing something to it to make it not so structured, not so hard, uh, but to make it soft and, and liquid. This is a castle in Scotland. Uh, it's the Eileen Donan Castle. And this was a uh, very strongly influenced piece uh, on the We Are Not Alone concept. When I took this photograph, there were people all over this. I had to, I had to surgically pull them out um, and make it just a single individual here that's walking along this walkway. And again, you see all the stars and this sprite out here to the side kind of symbolizing that this is a castle occupied by others uh, and leaves it to our imagination. What's happening here? What's going on? The starry skies, the swirls, very much a Van Gogh look to it with the Salvador Dali melting of the building and this fantasy of the stars. Uh, both inside and outside and all around this castle. The tones here are different. Uh, I chose to use warm tones to give this a very comfortable feel, and it certainly uh, can fit into just about any environment where neutral tones are, are, uh, are desirable. And uh, I call this Walk of the Donan. It's a 48-inch by 72-inch image, quite large, and... Uh, I also have it available in a smaller style, a 30 by 45 as well. Here is uh, a little bit of a commentary on the institutions of higher education. Um, I call this Assage to the Oracle of Higher Learning. And um, this is in a courtyard in Flagler College in um, St. Augustine, Florida. The uh, individual here, as you see him approaching, he appears to making an offering to this oracle that seems to be some sort of a life entity. Um, the, the idea here is that the oracle is angry. There's something that's going on, and, and the whole scene is, is in chaos. There's, there's like thunder, there's lightning, there's there's disruption, there's starry skies, uh, there's even this sense of a tombstone of something that's uh, here that died, but yet there's this oracle, this, this sprite of light and energy coming from it. And it, the idea is to just make us think about what happens in higher education, uh, what happens when we send our children off to be indoctrinated in, into the world of higher education and and the humbleness that they have to bring there in order to escape or graduate, as it may be, with a certificate that they carry for the rest of their life uh, as an offering to the, uh, the oracle of higher learning and, and to the intellects that occupy those institutions. Here we're looking at a picture from Sintra. Uh, there are a variety of castles in Sintra, which is located in the mountains of Portugal. Uh, just east of Lisbon and approachable by train. Uh, I really love this castle because it has so many unusual architectural elements. I believe there's, there's five different styles of architecture in this one castle. And to me, it sets a stage for another world, uh, certainly a, 
a place that could be another universe. It has beautiful gardens and, and the architecture is there. Here you'll notice, uh, I call this, uh, you know, uh, the walk of, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember the title of this right offhand. But the, the idea here is that, again, we are not alone. You see this large giant person next to the small person. And this is an indication of two different uh, people, two different entities, two different civilizations that might be uh, coinciding together. So um, I leave it to the imagination, again, with these giant nebulas in the sky as to where this is, uh, what's going on, who these people are, what type of civilization this might be, and how it might relate to us as an individual uh, as a, and as a society and, and as a civilization. Another uh, photograph that's been transformed uh, from images taken at the, uh, at the uh, uh, Phoenix National Palace in Sintra. Here, there's more people in the picture, and I choose to make it a little bit more whimsical through uh, changing their body forms and their shapes, capturing them in their daily life as they're kind of living in this um, altered reality. And, you know, to me, this almost feels like maybe the gingerbread cake of uh, a fairy tale. Uh, you've certainly got the, you know, everything that's, that's very uh, fantasy-esque here, the colors, the textures, and again, of course, the melting architecture that uh, positions this in the world of surreality. The uh, next set of groups fall into the group that I call mystic. Uh, these are surreal images of uh, beautiful women. They have been uh, enhanced through Photoshop to represent perfect beauty. And uh, many of them are not able to be shown over YouTube. I will just give you a, a high level view of the ones that are uh, considered safe for social media. Uh, this is, again, showing the stars uh, kind of occupying an extra world and this uh, very beautiful goddess-like character. I call this one uh, Psyche, after the story of Psyche uh, from mythology. This is another picture. I call this Atomica, uh, from the uh, her head being an atomic uh, element, uh, like a superhero with some kind of extraterrestrial powers. Again, the stars are there uh, circling her with the uh, electrons around her head and a very uh, bizarre gaze uh, toward staring down the, uh, the viewer. Here we have uh, two lovely women uh, walking down the stairs of the uh, lifeguard stand on South Beach. Again, we've changed the skies to a night with a lot of the starry skies, the spirals in the background. Everything's melting except for the uh, women themselves who seem to be uh, of, uh, of almost royalty in, in, in their look, their stare, and their stance. And this is a very, very abstract image. Uh, I've played around with mirror images to create a trio. And I call this Melange Atois because there are th three women here. There are two that are facing each other and their face, uh, their, their faces form a third face. So as you can see, there's two profiles that come together to form a uh, frontal view. And all of this happens again with the intermingling of their body parts uh, and in a kind of mystical way in which they're disintegrating and assembling themselves. And uh, this is the end of my uh, presentation of the Surality Collection. Uh, I encourage you to take a look back at the uh, images on my website uh, where you can go into more depth of each of these collections. Uh, there's quite a bit of artwork there and certainly it's available for purchase. And uh, if you are interested in some of this, I urge you 
to contact me and, and let me uh, prepare it for you and, and, and send, it, send it to your home. Um, I'm going to end the show now. And again, I thank you so much for your attending.